Hello, I'm Neil MacDonald. I've been running megalithic tours for nearly two decades now because throughout Britain and Europe, mysterious stone structures such as this can be found dating back thousands of years. But why did our ancestors build these magnificent monuments and what were they used for? Well, in this series of short videos, I'm going to attempt to answer these questions one ancient site at a time. So please do click on subscribe and on the bell to be notified of these future videos. He left Red Penrith's table round For feats of chivalry renowned Left Maybury's mound with stones of power By Druids left in magic hour Well that was Sir Walter Scott in 1813 And he was referring to this collection of henges here In the village of Earmark just south of Penrith And also the, uh, associated with the Arthurian legends This is King Arthur's round table henge for instance but any connection with the legends of Arthur have to be reasonably spurious because um, if this was a Neolithic henge, the timeline is uh, three and a half thousand years until our Dark Age king uh, and his legends come to life. But there are other sites associated with Arthur in the area. Just north of here there's uh, Pendragon Castle which has real associations with Uther Pendragon, King Arthur's father, and then nearby to that there's Lowerside Homestead, which is connected to Sir Lancelot. It makes you think anyway, doesn't it? King of Arthur's Round Table here used to be a classic example of what a hen should look like. That is until unfortunately the road cut through the northern section here, removing the northern section and totally destroying the northern portal entrance. But the rest of the henge here is fantastic. The, the embankment and the ditch and the central area still are fantastically formed. The other henge here is Maybra over in that direction and we'll go and have a look at that very soon. But in the 18th century, uh, a picture from uh, Stukeley and Pennant, which you can still see here on the display board, showed another henge over to the south, about 250 feet. And that was called the Little Table. And you know, I think I found it. This is actually the entrance to a, a wildlife park, uh, just a side entrance here, but as you can see, the road curves off uh, right round in a whole circle, and it's 250 yards south of King Arthur's Round Table, and I have to say, you can see how uh, the ditch goes down to one side here. This is a little henge.
So this mighty portal is the entrance to the magnificent Maybrahenge. King Arthur's Round Table is over in that, that, that direction, about 350 feet. The two hinges are obviously connected, but it's possible in more ways than one. Early drawings from the 18th century by Stukeley showed uh, the northern entrance to um, King Arthur's Round Table, there were two huge megaliths. And also here in the entrance to Maybrahenge, four megaliths. So it's not too far of um, a stretch to imagine uh, an avenue of stones between the two sites. Now Maybrahenge has some unique features. And one important one is that there's only actually one portal entrance. And it's here, and it faces due east. Therefore, at the equinox, twice a year, you can see the sun rise through the portal. But at the other side of the circle, there's no portal entrance. But having said that, way over to the west, you can see the mountain of Blencathra. And that has a dip in it, which is called the saddle. And at the equinoxes, you can see the sun setting over the saddle. So that truly is the other portal entrance to the site. So here we are now in the centre of the circle and we find this one remaining stone of over nine feet tall. But there used to be actually four stones here in a kind of a diamond shape and they would have marked out the cardinal points. East obviously straight through the port entrance there. And there's a theory also that maybe the shadows from these various stones, for those who could read it, could mark out the, the time of the year, maybe even act as a clock. Henge banks here at Maybra are another unique feature. They can't see anything like this anywhere else in the world. The banks are made out of these stones. Each one collected from the banks of the River Eamot just down the road. There would have been hundreds and thousands of these collected to build the monument. When it was finished, the, site, the banks would have been around 20 feet tall and possibly covered in a sheet of gypsum. So it would have been a wonderful white circular site. What a, what a thing to behold from walking down the Stone Avenue. So if you enjoyed the film, please do make a comment, uh, click on like and unsubscribe, and also on the little bell above to be informed of future videos. If you'd like to make a contribution to the making of these films, my PayPal and Patreon accounts are below. Tour information is at www.megalithictours.com. I hope to see you on a tour very soon, but in the meantime, have a truly megalithic time. <laughs>